uh, I um, I thought about a lot of things, and uh, we also are discussing with all the Harmonica UK team uh, about this. Uh, but in France, I'm playing harmonica in the schools. I'm making some small concerts, and also after some discovering session of harmonica, very uh, receptive. Um, fully happy to discover harmonica and start playing harmonica and uh, they even came on stage with us this month uh, on a concert uh, in the south of Paris in a big stage and uh, they, they, they played four songs with us three songs from my own ones walking for freedom rock and roll is not dead and a special song for beginners uh, only on harmonica and uh, they also played a great uh, blues standard with the blues brothers everybody did somebody to love so it was really interesting to build this project with the musicians and teachers from the territory because i'm the artist who come and just show what is a concert at school because many of children don't even know what is a concert and never had the chance to come in uh, with their parents or family before so it's uh, it's always a great thing for them to discover what is the instrumental practice and uh, the goal is to make them dream and to make them have the the idea and the wish and um, yeah the, the 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 exciting thing to play something and play music and create and express our th themselves and uh, it's really also helpful helpful sorry in their uh, scholar uh, scholarship, scholarships, yes, the, the, you know, the, the way in the, the beginning when you are just a learner in elementary school, then college, then high school, uh, th this is helpful for, for, for the children to learn playing music and playing harmonica, by the way, that's my role. And uh, the, all the, the persons I met in this context and uh, all the persons who accompany me in those um, cultural acts and musical acts are really, really happy of that. And uh, they, th they all th are thinking that it's a, a real benefit for the young people. Uh, so when, the, when Harmonica Yuka and Pete and all the team talked to me about the fact that this could be my role, I was completely according with this and uh, with a great enthusiasm. Uh, and it's, it's really passionate. But young players are not only young children and children, they are also young players because uh, I discovered with um, the last month uh, making my stuff with children that with adults who are just uh, starting playing harmonica is exactly the same in different ways. Yes, um, with the pedagogic, it's not the same, but in the general meaning, uh, there are some connection between the both uh, people and the both ages. Um, yes, and uh, the, the mixing, the, the side with mixing, mixing generations is really important for me because I think that harmonica is an, an, instru an instrument, sorry, really well known and uh, it's uh, it's a little a little bit of paradox because it's um it's a uh, an instrument which is really well known with players of legend wonderful world act performers and just extraordinary persons and players and also it's uh, an instrument which is not really um, natural in the young people choice when they are starting playing music it's not the way they they imagine playing music they are attracted by piano guitar singing but not harmonica in the the much the, the many many uh, the the most of all sorry uh, so I think that our role of all is to talk 
around us and uh, to talk to our friends and family and start start by this because harmonica is bringing a lot of things uh, young players from any ages uh, have the same difficulty at the first beginning in my sense it's the coordination between drawing and blowing because we are making the sound of the harmonica it's really something special because we are uh, blowing and drawing and uh, it's one it's the only breathing instrument uh, which is like that made like that in the most of all others you are just blowing and taking back your breath but blowing to make the sound and here we are making the, the song the both ways and most of all i think that we can say that our breath is like a rhythm process it's a, a rhythm thing when we are playing harmonica our breath is the main thing to make the melody and also to make the to make the melody and also to make the rhythm for example This is really difficult to play, even for for a confirmed confirm player, expert player, um, because at first to play music we are just drawing and blowing, drawing and blowing. This is the first step, and when you are starting, it's not so easy. You are just thinking about where, where I have to breath, where I have to blow, and when. And step by step, you are making some progress and taking lessons with teachers, for example, Harmonica UK teachers, uh, who are extraordinary persons. And um, uh, and I think that when you are an expert and uh, a professional player like us, for example, and uh, also for other instruments, because harmonica, but also guitar, also singing, piano, whatever, wh whatever your instrument, in fact, you will always need to work that point. The time, uh, the metronome, this is, those, those are basis, fundamentals, you will work all your instrumental life. So, for example, when you are making exercise, a young player or a confirmed player will play blow and draw, for example. But the difficult thing is to blow, but not only you will say some syllables, uh, some sounds, ta ta ka ta ka ta ta ka ta. And after the work is to play it on the metronome, tick. Tuk, 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 tick. You know that this song, the machine. You know the machine, the machine, the, the click machine. <laughs> I don't know if if it's clear for you because sorry for my English. I'm making my best, but sometimes I'm losing the words. Uh, I'm searching my words. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sam. <laughs> so, for example, one, two, three, four. This is your beat. Okay, you will say. Those are always things we are working every morning. Uh, I, I discussed a little bit with Sam before the beginning of our meeting. And uh, we were laughing because I told him every morning with my partner, um, we are taking a coffee. And uh, during we are taking a coffee, we are taking our instruments, harmonica and guitar for him. And uh, we are just working, playing music on the metronome. Every morning, one hour minimum. So it's a long way work, a lifetime work. And I think the most important work you have to do all your, all your life, because you will learn techniques, you will learn overblows, you will learn bands, you will learn, you will learn vibratos, effects, but everything has to be worked on time. And uh, all your phrase, phrases you will speak with your instruments, 
everything will be worked a second time, on time, a first time to learn bands, techniques, uh, improvisation stuff, for example. Um, but a second time, you will come back on everything you learn on the time to play it really clear, nice and clear and precise. And this work is the basis of all of the aesthetic work, the creation work, and also of the speed work and precision work. For example, <laughs> The mastery work of this is based on and this is on the time, the time I, I have in my head because I'm playing alone, so it's easy. But if I'm talking, uh, for example, this. Everything is nice and clear and strong and uh, going through and uh, that's uh, that's the work I this is my point of the my point of view of the connection and the link we can do between a learning from a young harmonica player not 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 in age but in everything <laughs> just the, the years of practice a new one brand new harmonica player and an expert, uh, a confirmed and intermediate harmonica players who are uh, who are just uh, keeping working the instruments. So it was important for me to talk about this for today. Um, I will play something for you if you want. And uh, after that, my proposal is to start um, discussing together. Uh, I can for often uh, give you some little exercise about what I've just talked about and uh, it will be my pleasure to answer your questions about harmonica, about uh, anything anything you want. It's a, a free dis discussion tonight and also some uh, if you have something something to say uh, it's uh, you are welcome so that's nice. Um, starting to play that's fine for you yes all right Small extract. 
Thank you very much. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much. So, I don't know if you have some questions. Uh, if you have, so, so have some something to say, you can just open your mic and uh, we are starting. Okay, people, sh people should be able to unmute themselves. So, please, um, don't be shy, as I say. Could I, could, I, could I quickly ask a question? Of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. First of all, chapeau, as they say, I'm in your country, I believe. Um, Thank you so much. As a beginner, I've been told that you shouldn't move your head, you should move the harmonica. You don't seem to do that. It, no. What was your feeling about that? I've learned harmonica moving my head not the hands the hands has to be your um how to say the the hands has to be uh, the support of your instrument but not the thing moving your head is moving because your muscles are much more strong and precise that your both arms like this and the goal is to get your left hand getting your harmonica the left hand and the right hand making the effects. This is the main rule um, I always say, and it, that's in that way I learn harmonica. After, with the years of practice, you will take it like this, or as I'm doing, I'm not always in the traditional position of the harmonica like this because there you have the special position to make the wah wah it's really easy to get it in that way for example your left hand like this with the fingers just straight here and your left your right sorry hand here just closing the box and when you are closing the box you can do the wah wah for example <laughs> And uh, this position is necessary. It's an it's a need to get this. You are playing. Your hands can't move to to, to move it. It's my head who is moving. It's really a need to get my hand, my head, head, head. Yes, head, not hand, head, <laughs> moving. You see my nose moving. It's my really my head which is moving. Okay, thank you. I was told off for doing that when I was when having some lessons. So I just, I was surprised to see how you did that. But thank you very much for your answer. Appreciate You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have to say, I, I don't like moving my, um, my head too much. I can feel my brain rattling yeah. around my head. <laughs> okay okay it's through that uh, um it's something i'm talking in the master class um the relaxation is the basis to play harmonica you really need to be relaxed and cool for harmonica playing it's a need because um if you are stressed and contracted uh, it will be difficult for you to breathe, it will be difficult um, to get the natural sound. The sound needs to be open when you play a harmonica. Um, and it's true that when you are stressed on stage, for example, for the first stages or jam sessions, the small breathing relaxation exercise can be nice. You breathe deeply and slowly and uh, just Tranquil, as we say in French, just cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's um, uh, something that has come up in discussion quite a bit in the these Saturday sessions is about nerves. You know, so, so we do the open mic, and um, many of you will know Lena, who she, she, I don't think she's playing been playing chromatic that long, but she's she had the had to pluck up courage to play at the open mic and I think she said she was really felt really nervous and I guess you could hear it in her playing a little bit because she did really really well but as time has gone on she's got a lot more confident um so it's, it's just I suppose it's the hardest thing is getting over that hill that first get getting yourself uh, getting other people to hear 
and we play. Have you got any 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 tips then to to help people who are playing in front of others for the first time? Yeah, of course. The first is uh, that um, if you are making mistakes when you are playing in front of other people, um, it's not grave because um, the only persons who are not making mistakes or things that can be improved are the persons who are not playing in front of the audience. So this is the first step. Um, the second one is that even I, when I was younger, when I, I was a learner, I did something good and some things not really good. And uh, each experience is an experience. Uh, so maybe the psycho psychologic um, idea to, to tell yourself that I have no risk. I'm just here for fun. My passion is to play harmonica. I'm here to just um, have a great time. And uh, in that way, whatever, what I will try to do my best. And after that, if there are some mistakes or things that can be improved, no matter, I'm here for that. So from that point, it's um, not a pressure to be good on stage. It's just a pleasure to play with friends. And um, I think that just the fact to think about it before may help. And um, after physically, just uh, sit down and uh, breathe loud several times and uh, think about the fact that it's not a pressure but just a pleasure and uh, keep the smile on and uh, um, just basically try to do your best and um, in harmonica playing I think the most important thing is to play what you know to play in front of other people. Um, in that way, I mean that you can make experiences, but each experiences in front of people can be a mistake. Because if it's an experience, you didn't really do this before. So if you didn't really do this before, it's a risk. So maybe the idea is when you are in front of an audience, um, play just what you know to play only. Not make tries. Tries has to be done in lessons, with your teacher, uh, at home, um, with your friends, musicians, where in your, when you are not on stage, but not on stage. I think that those three points may help. Can, can I just add to that as well? I mean, I, I, I play bass as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember I uh, joined the band about 15 years ago. And when I started, you know, when we started doing gigs, I was so in, you know, focused on getting every note right that it probably wasn't much of a performance. Whereas as time went on, I thought, well, actually, I want to enjoy myself here, you know. And yes, there were more what we call bum notes, you know, wrong notes. But actually, you get to a point where you think, well, that doesn't actually matter. The odds, certainly on the bass, anyway. Um, <laughs> the odd, the odd um, wrong note isn't isn't a problem. I, th I think. If people can see that you're enjoying yourself, yeah, and and you're sort of performing, <laughs> yeah, it's far better than someone sort of you know looking yeah, at and... hand and um, and I th and I think that takes time as well. It's sort of a process of thinking from, yeah. from saying I've got to get every night every note right here. Yeah, Not absolutely. Thinking, no, mm -hmm. let's okay. Let's just enjoy ourselves a bit more and mm -hmm. forget the odd note wrong. Then you know. It's in the past. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. And it's also the energy, which is fundamental. The energy when you are playing on stage, the smile, um, the, the, uh, the pleasure to be there and just communicate your pleasure to be there. I think you're absolutely right, uh, Sam, when you are telling this. It's so great to play several instruments. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Well, some, so, uh, sometimes I've, I'm with a duo, so sometimes I play harmonica and bass at the same time. Oh, that's, uh, so that's a <laughs> can be challenging. Yeah, yeah, a lot of courage to do this. Uh, well, practice, you know. Um, yeah. That's uh, and I because I always think about drummers being able to partition their minds to you know two legs, two hands, 
split everything into four. So if I'm splitting into two, then I'm, I'm still only working half as hard <laughs> as a drummer. So um, <laughs> that's one way to look at it anyway. Yeah, so great. Uh, from my part, uh, I'm learning guitar, guitar playing and piano play playing. It really helps me for the studio work and the composing work. And uh, yeah, I think that playing another instrument that harmonica is a great thing to discover the harmony, the chords uh, in uh, another way, because our instrument is a soloist, soloist instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, even if we may, we are making small rhythmics, uh, we don't have the chords in the visual side as you can see on a piano or feel on a guitar. Uh, so I think it's really interesting to play both and also bass, of course. And Noel is telling, Charlie Parker used to say, there is no such thing as a wrong note. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, was probably, it was probably pretty easy for him to say that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. But I think that even the legends are making wrong notes sometimes. Yeah. It's um, human. It, it is true. Um, I'm wondering what your influences are. Um, I, I suppose one of, the, one of the French harmonica players I've listened to would have been Jean-Jacques Milteau. And I'm sure I can hear some influences in your playing of some of those really fast runs you do, which are really fantastic. Um, they, they, they remind me of, of his playing quite a bit. Thank you very much. Yeah, Jean-Jacques Milteau uh, is um, my childhood uh, in a way because uh, I, I saw him in concert several times when I was a little girl with my parents and uh, also after I had the pleasure to meet him in Paris and uh, several times also. So he is a big influence for me and it's, um, it's a person that I worked all his methods, uh, his books, you know, the, the learning books um, and uh, um, yeah, the learning books and um, ah, how to say, uh, you know, the ones where there are all the songs to learn with uh, the tabs and uh, the CD attached with the book when you, you I, I put the cassette, the, the, yeah, cassette, it's old, <laughs> and, uh, and CDs uh, in, uh, in the, 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 the turn, the turning uh, CD player, the listening CD player. And uh, I was working on this uh, all the time uh, during my learning years. Uh, from Jean-Jacques Milteau and also other persons. Um, my biggest influences as an artist today, I think, are at the crossroads between Johnny McCoy, Stevie Wonder, Toot Stillmans. A lot of chromatic harmonica players inspired me. It's really strange because I'm absolutely not playing a chromatic harmonica. For me, diat diatonic and chromatic are really two different instruments and also the chords harmonica and bass harmonica that's also other other instruments um, because the notes uh, the notes are um, not placed in the same place on a diatonic harmonica and a chromatic one um, and in in my case <laughs> I tried chromatic and uh, I sent the chromatic two times to be repaired because I had the use and the reflex to bend and uh, the harmonica didn't like that at all and I started to bend and say okay no no it was just to push on it oh, I would bend it. and so it was a, a, tor a torture torture I don't know how to say um, you know the fact to to making something bad to somebody <laughs> and uh, and uh, to 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 going strong on it no 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 <laughs> so the harmonica has been broken several times and I just understood that it wasn't made for me. Uh, but instead of this paradox, Stevie Wonder inspired me for the sound and um, the faster, the fast playing he has and uh, the amazing sound and, and time, the groove he has is just incredible and the same for Toot Stillman and Charlie McCoy and uh, I have also some big influences in the very old once uh, before that, uh, Muddy Waters, Big Mama Thornton, and most of all, Sonny Terry, of course. I also has a big influence uh, from Norton Buffalo. Uh, those are some players I just admire and uh, listened for days and days and days. Uh, it was my parents can 
testimony that uh, they can say that they had a lot, a lot, a lot of those albums in the car during the travels. And they was just saying again and again and again. Are you sure? Yes, again. Yes. <laughs> it was so good. So, so do you have some influences from um, other, other music that you that you bring into your harmonica playing? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, my first influences were from gospel, jazz, uh, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Nina Simone, um, the gospel, the big gospel choir um, with uh, all the, the songs, the gospel songs, uh, and uh, also a lot of rhythm and blues, Stevie Wonder, Red Charles, um, Aretha Franklin, uh, Andrew Sisters, um, and also the funk, uh, boys and girls, uh, Marvin Gaye, Michael Jackson, um, and all the pop music. Uh, I tried to, I, I, I've started to play harmonica on every style I could find. Uh, on the jazz ones, of, for example, I remember that I worked at jazz on, for example, uh, Django Reinhardt with Minor Swing, uh, Les Yeux Noirs, Black Eyes. Um, also some songs from uh, Birelli Lagraine as Made in France. Um, it's uh, some really hard and technical, hard technique songs, but it's really great to work your instrument and to play new things. Uh, I've also worked with a piano player who were making Latin music and begin from islands. Um, it was uh, some jazz, Latino jazz. Uh, I, I've made the rhythm and blues and rock. I've played a lot of rock. I love the rock stuff. Uh, Deep Purple, Queen, Dire Straits, um, uh, Rolling Stones, uh, um, David Gilmour, Gary Moore, Jeff Beck. Uh, uh, what else? Harry Hancock also. Oh, one of my big influences, Lou Donaldson. Uh, Lou Donaldson, saxophone player, a legend uh, of the saxophone, and um, also Herbie Hancock, piano. Um, I remember also, for example, working on um, Dave Brubeck. It was really hard with the five time measures. He is mad, completely mad with that take five. <laughs> what a thing to play on a harmonica. And um, I think that um, after that, a lot of time after, I came back to the origins and um, uh, to Robert Johnson, Muddy Waters, Ronnie Maggie, Sonny Terry, Little Walter, a lot also, and uh, Sister Rosetta Tarp, Big Mama Thornton, all the old players and the old ones who are bringing something really special, technically more easy, but they have a real true identity in their play. They worked a lot and, uh, yeah, I forgot. Also a lot of New Orleans Sydney Bechet. Uh, I worked a lot of New Orleans jazz and music. And uh, all of those influences inspired me to play harmonica and everything I could find. And uh, also much modern music. For example, last year we made a song from Daft Punk and we played it, guitar and harmonica in our both voices, singing the, the voice part. And everything is possible with our instrument. That's what it's really magic with harmonica. And also a lot of country music. Love country music influences. That's uh, amazing. Um, Johnny Cash, uh, there's so many names. Uh, but it's it's I always think it's very um major sounding country, isn't it? So it's like if you're improvising over a country song, you think pentatonic major scale. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can't go wrong. Yeah, um, of course. Uh, for example, I love a song from Norton Buffalo. I don't know if you know this song, but it's really amazing. It's eighteen wheels. Eighteen wheels. <laughs> Amazing rhythmic, isn't it? <laughs> and um, yeah, of course, the Orange Blossom special from Charlie McCoy. This is a legend song. 
legendary song. And um, I remembered also an artist I didn't talk about, but he's a great part of my concerts also, because I've, I'm always playing his song on stage. It's Magic Dick with the Warmer Jammer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're playing an A harp there, aren't you? Yeah, he's playing it yeah. on an A harp. I will visit with a C. Yeah. I don't know if you have your harmonica here. People have the harmonicas? Yeah. A, a few nervous nods. <laughs> oh, no, it's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm reading the message here's a great lesson in playing the wrong note and getting into songwrite from victor wooden bassist with bella fleck and fleck stones who howard levy plays for too and howard levy great influences also yeah. for me i followed his workshops and uh master class uh, always even yeah, all the time i had to see him i just run to see him he's so amazing and a kind man it's uh, really impressive he's really impressive yeah i when he did the festival i found him very very sort of humble and very you know um, yeah. yeah just as though you're talking to your, to your next door neighbor or something he, it was a brilliant brilliant workshop yeah um, oh he's so impressive but it's 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 funny for me because I've I've just mentioned in in the chat about um, Victor Wilson, who I when I was sort of played bass more than I played harmonica, I'd listen to him thinking, oh right, okay, you know, he's 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 he's, sound, he's got brilliant sound and you know his his chops are really really good, and he'll start a video, a, a tuition video, saying, oh this is easy, this is easy, and then two minutes in, it's <laughs> you know, it's it's not so easy. But that video, if you have a look at that video, it's 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 quite, it, it, it's just brilliant how he makes wrong notes sound right. It, you know, it's it's really really worth a listen. And part of it is just to keep on playing that wrong note, so it actually sounds as though it's intentional. <laughs> so um, so yeah, if people get a chance, have have a little nose at that video. Um, have we got some more questions? Any more questions? So, so when you're um, when you're teaching youngsters, you know the young children, do you tend to use a C harmonica? Yes, yeah. yes, always, uh, because it's 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 the basis. The C harmonica is uh, something really easy. Uh, for some of them, they already they all um, have. A, f sorry, for some of them. Uh, the, the children has some harmonica at home. They are getting from the grandfather, for example, or the family. And uh, in that way, that permits them uh, to start with a generic harmonica. The C is the first one you are playing on. Uh, all the new songs for beginners are in C harmonica for the major part of the... So to discover, I think it's the best way. And uh, the, the harmonica I'm using in the partnership of Horner are the happy color, the plastic ones, uh, because they are um, easy to buy by the fact they are um, uh, one of the cheaper ones. Cheaper? Yeah, cheaper? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, low price, I mean. And um, what, what is interesting is that it's um, something enough to just discover making sound and first effects on the harmonica. For example, blow and draw in the grave part, the low part, sorry, in the middle part, and the, and the, the high part. That's the only thing the child, uh, the children need to know, because they even don't know what is a measure, what is a time, if it's working by four, 
they are just discovering everything in the first uh, steps. Uh, so they just need to know just how to blow, how to draw in several holes. And after that, I bring them uh, to make something easy, for example, the train. <laughs> and uh, a lot of other things around this. But the train is uh, something we always use uh, as a, a professional player. Um, in my sense, I'm always playing this in my songs. Um, the, um, the new songs I'm composing also needs some strong rhythmics like this. You are a million, million ways to make some rhythmics like this. <laughs> For example, um, you have million ways to do this and um, to to make it sound differently, depending of each person, because everybody has a different way of play. <laughs> so, so, um, any other questions or comments on what Rochelle's just said? So I've, I've got another question, but I don't want to um, I don't want to hug that. The question, but anyway, what I'm going to say is, do you, do you, when you're playing, do you use amplifiers or, or certain microphones, or are you just straight into the PA? No, uh, I'm playing uh, in a, the more natural way I found in my microphone, in my voice microphone. Uh, I'm not using amps and uh, other microphones, uh, but the only time, time I'm using the harp blaster from Honor, the HB52, uh, with uh, children, because uh, it permits me to play in a clear sound uh, really easily and uh, to bring in uh, the small places in the class uh, a small acoustic amp, who permits me to get a microphone really easily just for the harmonica, because I don't need it for my voice in a 30 children um, class. Um, it's, uh, it's the way I'm using the harmonica microphone but uh, on stage I'm playing in the voice microphone and it's really nice uh, it permits me to get a sound really natural and really close in the use uh, as my voice the harmonica is like a second voice always okay just another question I've thought of is in a normal week how much time do you spend practicing, how much time do you spend teaching, and how much time do you spend gigging? Oh, uh, it's always gigging, not teaching, because um, the teaching staff is really linked with the gig. Um, because each time I'm learning something to somebody, it starts with a concert, uh, even a small one. But they really need to, 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 to feel, to know, to, 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 to see with their own eyes what's happening for the, the real way to get the projection the projection projection projects projection mm -hmm. <laughs> i yeah. don't know how to say that <laughs> projection and the, the and the the dream of it uh, to say okay maybe not tomorrow but in one two three years oh yes i will go in that direction uh, so um, playing by, for myself, it's uh, one hour in the morning and uh, more in the day if I have time. Um, but when I was learning the instrument, the technical way of the instrument, it was four hours a day, two hours at the minimum, and four hours a day when, I, when it was on the weekends uh, and things like that. Uh, actually. I'm working harmonica when I'm making also uh, performances because uh, when you are playing, it's always work of your instrument. Well, and uh, two hours in the morning, something like that, depending on the the running way of the day. <laughs> and uh, and after that, uh, we we have uh, uh, yeah around the. Uh, 40, 40 concerts a year um, mm. in different ways and contexts. I, I just wonder if I can ask then, I mean, that's, that's really, really good, good information. Um, I'm thinking, what would anyone like to talk about their own um, practice um, regime, whether or not you're 
I mean, I'm I'm awful. I always say, right, I'm going to do this this evening, but never get around to it because something else gets in the way. So, I think Alan, would you like to say something? I, I, not about the practice specifically, oh. but as a beginner, and you're teaching people, are, are the a set of stages that are important that you reach in sequence are the three techniques for instance that you would say these you have to know the three first techniques you would have to know as a beginner to start with yeah okay um okay <laughs> i have a surprise for you oh, yeah. um I think that starting by working on the sound is a basis, mm -hmm. one of the strong basis. Uh, working on the time, on the metronome, the click, tick, tuk, 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 and um, the ability to understand that harmonica is like a conversation. Even if you know only the natural notes and absolutely not a band, you can start to make clear artistic work. And this is something really important because from the first beginning, you are a musician artist, a beginner, a learner, okay, but you are making music. And in that way, I think that the aesthetic way of what you are playing is something important to think about from the first beginning. Uh, when you will learn bendings, for example, it will give you a lot of difficulty from the beginning. It's normal. So to include it in your play, it will be something strong and hard. So it will cause some rhythm difficulties, uh, a lot of attention, concentrate on the fact of bending, so less attention on other things. A uh, difficult way to start the phrase by a band or to finish the phrase on the band. So all of this will bring perturbations in your play and it's completely normal. But if you always think that even as a beginner you will learn your first phrase, uh, sorry, For example, I'm just drawing, then drawing both, then blowing. And what is interesting is the sound and the rhythm. And it's the idea that I have is to tell that when you are beginning the harmonica, you just blow and draw in rhythm with a nice sound. And the, the, the last, last thing would be to learn the main effects. For example, the hand one, I'm starting the, the same phrase. No bend, nothing, just the sound of the harmonica. I'm drawing, blowing in the right time, at the right moment, in several holes, not difficulty to make a single note clear, no, just then, okay, in the good rhythm and the good sound and the good effect to end. And what is important in the harmonica playing, much more when you are a learner, is to think that you will accompany each note in her living. You will start your note really clear, nice and clear, and each note you will accompany her in her living. From the beginning to the end, it's really important. For example, the last note, there is a small vibrato, really easy to do, you are showing a shrink gum, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, stop, I'm stopping breathing to a moment. I'm not waiting to get no air, to stop my note, I'm just deciding that the note will be this. Or, for example. So, as a beginner, I think that um, the important is to know how to start and how to stop. Each phrase has to be really nice and clear with a beginning and an ending. 
those are our main principles and uh, main principles that you will work all your instrumental player life whatever the instrument you are choosing in guitar is the same the piano is the same the singing is the same saxophone is the same so are those are musical principles we have to learn from the youngest age that's what i think about it <laughs> that's very kind thank you yes very clear you're welcome yeah just picking up on that what alan mentioned about i mean i always think as you say the beginning and end of notes yeah. are very very important um because sometimes it can sound you know if, if someone's playing three blind mice or you know oh susanna if they just finish if they um say the note a little bit put it a little bit longer than 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 what the music would say then it sounds totally different than if you just do you know three blind mice so three blind mice you know what i mean and it's it, it's it's those um little things that you can add add to your playing um that, that i think it sort of adds to what rochelle says there that that a lot of it is there's lots of i mean there are a lot of techniques extra techniques that, that harmonicas can do that you can't necessarily do on a on another um woodwind, woodwind or um brass instrument and you say you know the hands then there's the sort of the type of vibrato whether it's tremolo um you know there's and i think as as rochelle says there one of the easiest ones is is the you know the 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 hand um what, what, what's it called i forgot what it's called now um oh, wah -wah. yeah, the, wah -wah, the, yeah. The, the hand vibrato is the first yeah. one you are learning just yeah just making pushing the air behind your instrument when, when you are blowing or drawing is the easiest one and uh, for the beginners that's great they, they 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 get all the keys to start making music in fact uh, even if yes you will have to learn bands and everything yes all right but you also have two euro free free it's all it's all free and here and um and just this is just magic and uh, if you have a group of harmonica players as our 60 child children on stage with us it's just pretty amazing <laughs> sure may, may I, I have a comment please oh uh, hi at all yes it's pete yes. here from norway by the way so when oh I was a kid, when i was a kid i of course started with diatonic today i play on the harmonica but i like to listen to Beltoni. Yeah. But I remember, of course, I, I'm self-taught and I, I can read music when I was a kid and I cannot today. But I learned to tune a song by heart and I tried to play it. And I remember I was so frustrated when I played a song that had a seminote. Of course, I didn't know what a seminote was, but I could find a note. And I was so frustrated, and it put me off. So um, I don't know. Is it? I never heard about bending, for instance. So um, I mean, there was no way for me to get a solution of this. But um, do you think that you should learn to bend pretty early when you start learning? Okay. okay. Okay, so I will speak about my experience. When I started harmonica at five years old, little girl, I didn't make a band during the four first years of practice because I had only the books and my parents and nobody played harmonica. They were not YouTube and everything. And uh, we had uh, just the possibility to listen the CDs and read the books. And um, it was explained for the, the bands 
but uh, when you read this, it's not really expressive. And um, so during four years, I played without any band, but I played all the notes, but all the bands were on natural notes. And uh, I don't think it, it was a problem because at my first harmonica lesson in the School of Harmonica in Paris, uh, I've made my first band and I've just understood what I missed before, but the time I spent to just play in the right case, the right uh, holes and uh, the right notes, nice and clear, without any bend, where was not a losing time, a lose, lose, lose time. It was not time lose at all. Uh, so in the practice to begin, I think that yes, you will have to learn bands quickly, but me, it was a really long time because there were not internet and all the possibilities. So if you can start with so quickly, that's so great. But it's, it don't, I think that it don't has to be the fixed goal because that goal will come during weeks and years of practice uh, to be uh, nice and clear and completely, uh, completely, um, um, how to say, um, knowing to do it really well. Uh, it's not magic uh, and bands are some pretty tricky things. It's, um, it's not easy at all. Uh, so when you are learning in the same time to make the sound nice and clear, to play in only one hole, step by step, one by one, and also bend, it's, it's a lot of things. So I think that in, in your learning you have to be patient. The first step is to learn playing note by note. And also to get all, uh, when you are playing, for example, a two draw, then a six blow, there's a lot of holes to jump. And all the jumps are difficult. So those are, those are some simple notions to work on. Uh, during the same time, so when you are starting playing, you can start to try to bend. But it just needed to know that it will not be something really easy to get um, for, from the first step. It will be something you will have um, during a little time. I think it's really, really good advice. I mean, m my personal experience with bends was I started probably playing properly in the late 1980s. And obviously the internet wasn't even invented then. And there wasn't any help as such. You know, I didn't know any other players. And I would I would play more in a, in a folky sense, but I think it was whole six that I managed to get like a little bend in it there. And I thought, oh, right, there's an extra note there. And I just didn't know that's what you could do on harmonica. And then, it, of course, it, it, those bends then came further down. So I would so I'd, I wouldn't say I made a conscious effort to start bending. It mm. just sort of happened almost by accident. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if is anyone else who started at a similar time before the Internet. Has anyone else got any experience of how they came across bends? Well, it was a great thrill actually to 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 achieve your first proper bend, probably on on hole four, draw four, and yeah. uh, you you actually felt you were you you were getting somewhere uh, at that point. But um, I, I suppose recently I've I've been following David Barrett's instruction books, you know, and he has one one book. Um, he talks about um using tongue blocking, and, and you know he says that if you want to play blues, you got to be tongue blocking. And I, I, I wasn't really a tongue blocker, more a sort of a parser. Um, but he, he, at one point in the book, he says, okay, now you got to do a tongue block and a bend at the same time. And uh, you can rejoin the book in three months time. <laughs> and I was just wondering, is it actually worth the effort? Because when you're tongue blocking and trying to bend at the same time, ain't easy, ain't easy. And the flow, the flow can, unless you're really good at it, the, the flow of the music is is compromised, you know. So I wonder, have you any comment on, on that sort of technique, that level of technique? Yeah, it's a more complicated thing to do to bend during the same time that you are making tongue blocking. Yeah. 
You know, the exercise is difficult, but it's possible. It's more um, like a need, for example, in that rhythmic. I need to make the three bend one time with the tongue blocking technique during the same time. But in the play, the, this playing, it's easy. But if I want to play, for example, another song, uh, if I'm starting to make tongue blocking to do the bends, uh, it's, it's, it's a hell. <laughs> Because it's not a technique that I started with. There are some players who are really specific on this. But in my play, I'm always playing the bands uh, on single notes or overblows with single notes. And my thing is to switch really quickly between the both techniques. For example, here I'm using the traditional band with tongue blocking. <laughs> it's much more easy to play but uh, in my play I'm just switching every time in my phrase between tongue blocking and single notes and bands with single notes tongue blocking yeah. and single notes and bands with single notes. for example tongue blocking single note chord, octave, tongue block, tongue block, chord, then single note, the link, tongue blocking for the blow, then back on single, single note. So if you are just seeing with the loop what's happening, that's it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it doesn't take anything from the, um, the the flow of the music at all and what you're playing. So I, I, I would say to anybody who is following David Barrett's books, just be careful in that one, because I think he's been very rigid in his approach in that, you know, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to tongue block and bend at the same time to achieve like the sound you've just demonstrated. So, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's just my way of playing all the harmonica players and all the artists will have their yeah. thing. So I think that you may ask the question to Dave on how it's how he's doing for making this without any problem of uh, linking in the play, and that it's not something you will not hear. Because I think that he has he has the solution, but me not. <laughs> it's not my stuff. <laughs> but I think that all of the persons you will meet uh, and explain things on a harmonica will bring um, bring something. And um, for example, that technique you are um, talking about is something really interesting and really interesting to learn. Um, from my part, I'm just don't, knowing that it's not my specialty and that I will use this in a really specific context. Uh, and I'm doing the job in another way. But um, it might be interesting to ask a question to Dave about how he's doing, because maybe yeah. he's not making my way of thing uh, switching always, but he is making this uh, in the result of music. You will hear something um, nice and clear and similar, as you said, but with another um, solutions and uh, things put in place uh, to find the right way to, to bring everything to a, a musical piece really um, enjoyable. Um, yeah, I think we, we, we have to ask the Dave, it's the best one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, but it is interesting to see all the different techniques because um, I know we had um, a, a guy called Ben Bowman uh, do a yeah. session for us from, from the Netherlands some time back. And he made a very interesting comment about the question was, you know, pursing or tongue blocking. Yeah. And he said, he said, well, I use neither really. He, he, he said he uses something called a, a false or pretend tongue blocking where he uses a pursed embouchure but he's, he's using a lot of chords all the time, one or two notes. And listening to him, you think he's tongue blocking. It, it wouldn't have the force of tongue blocking, but it was very similar. So you, you're, you're, you're totally right. Everybody has their own way and style of doing it. And, and it's, a, it's a very important thing to, to bear in mind. If, if you're doing well with your music and you're getting on with it, hey, just go ahead, you know, and, yeah. and 
Yeah, absolutely. It's really interesting to study all the visions of harmonica. I did it when I was a learner. Uh, I, 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 I came to see Jason Ritchie and Howard Levy and uh, a lot of players, everybody. I came to see I, when I was going on festivals and I remember the Trossingen ones uh, I did when I was um, um, a teen. Uh, I came there and just came to all the, the workshops I, I could find. Whatever it is, I, just to, to see everybody, to see how it happens for them it's really important because um, you will keep things for yourself uh, and uh, things you you will not keep because it just met, not meant for you because physically we have all the different mouth and different dimensions and I prefer golden melody but maybe you will prefer another one um, everything is really personal in this instrument also the way to make techniques uh, when i'm trying to explain how to do bands for example um i'm doing it uh saying the big rule but all of you will find your way to do it uh, i'm trying to find images but the the more rich thing is to um, to study how is a good solution for you because um, the good solution for me won't be the good solution for you or for a part of it. But the whole thing, we don't know, is depending on everybody, really. I think that's a, a, a brilliant answer. That's, um, I think that sums it up very well. And, and I, I think that I always come back to is you've got to enjoy playing. So yeah. if you if you know we're there sitting there for three months trying to get these t t tongue block bends, yeah, there's a good chance you'd think, Do you know what, I'll go and take up the violin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were Pete, hi Rachel, Ben and Sam. I'm in London for a birthday. Thank you for giving up your precious time. We are also very grateful. Off to get ready, Pete. Oh yeah, we have to. I didn't didn't saw that in the live. <laughs> he's gone. Oh, no. I, I think <laughs> he said he was, gonna, he, he was going to say how he just popped in to say hello. And, yeah, yeah, um, I know this. Yeah, he we wrote deep, me before. And um, we're deep in conversation. Um, yeah. Just aware of, a ta of the time, I've noticed yeah. Peter has waited patiently. Uh, he's. Put a, a questions uh, just asking you do you know Greg's lap yeah yeah thank you very much for the question yes I know it, him of course he was my teacher when, when I was a child at um, the school of blues in Paris the school I'm talking about is a harmonica school and also other instruments in Paris and at this uh, this time he was the teacher there so we met there in uh, in lessons and after that we met also on events concerts and, and others Okay, Sh should we leave it there then? Any other questions? This is your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> you can no. have the time to, to think about it. I have one thing to tell you. If you want to, to, to work on something, I have a proposal, okay? With a C harmonica, because it's uh, more easy for everybody. I don't know if you have several harmonicas, so C will be nice. And for example, just a phrase. But depending on your level of practice, you will bring much or less um, step of difficulties on the same phrase, okay? So, the goal is to do the simple blues phrase blow uh, draw sorry one two three four draw the chord then blow a little up two three four five blow okay then draw in three four five so that means for the first step and i come back And I come back. Just this. After, <clears throat> if you want to work at home and complicate things, you will play with a little tongue blocking in the second part. Blow a uh, draw first, 
then blow, but with tongue blocking. And after, I can add a little to create the link in the cycle, because this phrase is just the same forever, and you have silences to play, and after, during the silences, you can make some little nice things to make the link and make live the cycle and the music. Then, 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 And you know, all the difficulty is to bring some personal phrases and a little bit of melodies and effects to make live the music really. This is really difficult. And uh, I think that the, the connection be between the first step and the last step is maybe something like that. The symbol of it is here on the demo demonstra demonstration. The first ones will play. That's what I'm playing with children. And after? Uh, a performer, artist on stage, for example, a professional player will play. And this is not so complicated and not overblows, not so speed notes, but the fact of think to your notes, begin, end the notes, make some effects inside, put a little vibrato there, then another effect in another, another time. And this is really a huge work. That's what I'm just thinking about. <laughs> it's my vision of things. I mean that's a, that's a great little exercise to start with, isn't it? Because you can um, you can just build up your and practice the extra little techniques. You know the um, the hand flutter and and what and you know it's, it's just and keep the time as well. Obviously, Rochelle mentioned earlier on about playing with a metronome, yeah. which is something I never do. So yeah, <laughs> it, 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 not bad, not bad. You just need to need to start. It, it yes. will be a great, a great discover, I'm sure. Uh, I do tend to start racing, so you're probably getting faster and faster. So yeah. <laughs> like a train. yeah. But you need to, to to work with the metronome if you want to to, to play speed, mm. with, with very fast with speed. If you want to increase your speed and precision, it has to be on the metronome. You really need of that. Okay. Possibly, I'm sorry to keep doing asking questions, but as a complete idiot, um, when you were talking about tongue blocking, yeah, what 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 notes were you blocking and what were you playing? Okay, tongue blocking for me uh, is, for example, blocking the holes one, two, three, and blowing in the four, for example. The same in drawing. And tongue blocking is a fact to bring rhythmic. For example, I'm tapping, I'm, I'm putting my tongue on the holes. The exercise is here. Okay, and drawing. Then draw and blow.
and uh, always blowing in the side on the higher side and blocking the holes before. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Yes, again. That's so great. Okay. I'm very happy to see you here. Thank you very much for coming. It's a real pleasure for me once again. And thank you so much, Sam. No, well, th thank, thank you for giving up your time. Um, you know, really, really appreciate it. And also um, what you're doing for Harmonic UK, um, it, get, getting younger people uh, engaged. So it's, it's um, going to be quite an exciting time, I think, the next, next year or two. So th thank you so much. Uh, also, thank you every, everyone else who's, who's come along today, and I'm sure, sure everyone will take uh, has picked some some very very good tips. Um, all that I'll say now is next session will be the um, Christmas open mic. That's two weeks today. So if you got Christmas songs, that'd be great. If you got a Christmas jumper or hat, that'd be even better. Or yeah. lights lights strapped round you or. Yeah, you know, so hopefully it'll be no mince pies, mince pies and harmonicas. Not oh, good. so great, so great. <laughs> uh, I have something something to say. It's just that uh, we can organize session like this as much often as you want. It's a real pleasure for me, and uh, it's uh, yeah. If if you like it, yes, we we will do it again several times. It's a great great thing to talk together.